Today is 114 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on 10% of the way through Ruby currently. Was it 10% last night or 5? Maybe we started at 5 and ended at 10. Point is, is that we can see the maintenance icons are finally gone from both Python and Ruby. And they were also showing, at least on the catalog, because those are all the courses that we've currently attempted. Under the catalog, they show everything, though, that they have to offer. And look at that. Learn JavaScript control flow. They've updated or added a new segment to that. They complete, okay, so it was, look at this, look at this, right. So this is new. Learn how to use if, else, else, and switch, and ternary syntax to control the flow of a program in JavaScript. Cool, okay. So, also they finished no more maintenance icon on Ruby. They still have all three. And here, they still have PHP as well. Look at that. Cool, cool. So they didn't, they just did updating, which is nice. Okay, so with that said, for Ruby, let's go ahead, we'll close out of this. We'll take a look. Maybe they updated some stuff. Overview. It looks about the same. Yeah, they had like 10 or 11 things. That still looks normal. Okay, I don't think... There probably wasn't too much that they changed in here. It's probably just some general bot correcting. Alright, awesome, awesome. Also, additionally, I was successful. Yeah, last night, last night's late night stream, we had to cut it short. Well, not really cut it short. Track down one of the... uh one of the NES Classic consoles. There we go. Can we see that? Yes, I was successful. We had to wait wait in line for a while. But uh, that's a Christmas gift to someone else. Mind you, it is... It's April 24th. We are about five months behind on delivering this guy. But we, we had no, no idea it would be so unbelievably difficult to get a hold of one of these. And uh, it was the first release since they announced they were gonna discontinue them we had to wait outside best buy <sighs> but we we delivered we said we would get this for their christmas gift and uh yeah yeah we we kept our word on that one so good times and and got one of the the wireless controllers so tons tons of fun where's there we go there we go beautiful beautiful all right so that's that's aside from the point. Although it is fun to look at. Here's back because we can do that. We've got we've got it. All that all that goodness. These were going for like three hundred and twenty or three hundred and sixty dollars online. Can you believe that? Ridiculous. It's only supposed to be sixty bucks. All right. We set that on the floor. That's out of the way. Successful hunt. And now, now we're diving into Code Academy. We got that sorted. Code Academy got their stuff sorted. We are diving into section two, control flow in Ruby. And uh, that's about it. There's, there's really no more, no more prologue. Yes, that would count as prologue. Let's do this. Control flow. There's, what, 16, 17 sections? This is kind of longer, and we're going to start to slowly... This still looks... I thought this was going to be all new stuff. This looks freakishly similar to everything else. A lot of general concepts here on repeat. <clears throat> but that's all right. That is okay. All that does oh, is tell us how important 
all that general syntax, not general syntax, how important those general concepts are. That's, that's what that shows. So it's not a, not a loss. All right, let's do this. Happy thoughts, right? This is good. This is our friend. Uh, yeah, how it works. You may have noticed that the kinds of programs we've written so far in Ruby aren't very flexible. Sure, they can take user input, but they always produce the same result based on, the, uh, based on that input. They don't change their behavior in reaction to the environment, the collection of all the variables, and their values that exist in the program at a given time. Control flow gives us the flexibility we're looking for. We can select different outcomes depending on information the user types. The result of a compilation, ah, the result of a computation, or the value returned by another part of the program. Instructions. Check out the code in the editor. There's some new syntax there, but we'll bet you can guess what it does. Do to do, do, click save and submit. See the program in action. Go ahead, give Ruby an integer that is positive or negative number with no decimal bit. Do 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 do, do. print integer, please. User num integer gets dot chomp. The user number is greater than zero. Puts you picked. Oh, if the user number is less than zero, you picked a negative integer. The user number is greater than zero. You picked a positive number. Else, but you picked a zero. Followed by end. Hey, little cat. Perfect time. Uh, we're no, no, no. I love you, but we're just gonna set you right down. You're gonna assume the napping position. From the get go. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that so much easier? Okay, and she's gone. She didn't even, she just walked right down the chair off of my lap. Typical. Save and submit. Integer, please. Ooh, ooh. Toughy, toughy. We're, we're going to go with the tried and true 42. Huh, that, that kind of rhymed. Hey, furry demon, back again. You're blocking the save and submit. I think I'm on it. I am on it. Perfect. Section two. Please don't knock over the webcam or type anything with your foot and you're moving the mic. Hey, hey, you're adorable, but uh, you're you're typing things and you're moving you're moving stuff with your toes. No, no, no. You're awful. Hey, go on the bed or go away. What do you want from me, tiny animal? We were we were off to a decent start. They fixed the maintenance stuff. <laughs> they fixed the maintenance stuff. Clearly they didn't solve the cat issue. Oh my god, you're clicking reset and undo and uh, okay, yep, yeah, no, no. We're gonna set you back down. We're gonna try for the napping position. Yeah. Burr everywhere. <sighs> okay, that was two times. She didn't go in the napping position. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm just trying to not get stressed and pretend like she's not totally sabotaging everything. But it's very difficult <laughs> when there's so much fur in my eye. Oh my god, this is the end. What did you do to my phone, little cat? She is awful. She is awful. <sighs> okay. That's relatively normal. The webcam is mostly okay. That's as good as it's going to get. Hopefully she stays away. Okay. Two. Holy hell. So difficult. 17 sections. Two of 17. Semi-painful start. And now she's killing something. We're going to reset the code. If. If little kitty 
doesn't destroy the stream, we will be able to succeed. That's that's what I have to say to that. All right, Ruby's if statement takes an expression, which is just a fancy word for something that has a value like for, true, or pants. If that expression is true, Ruby executes the block of code that follows if. If it's not true, that is false, Ruby doesn't execute that block of code. It skips it, goes on to the next thing. Here's an example of an if statement in action. If one is less than two, print, I'm getting printed because on, uh, because one is less than two. Yes, yes, good, end. I wonder if we have to specify end in Ruby. Because we haven't had to in other languages. I get a hunch that's the case. Ruby doesn't care about white space. So spaces and blank lines. So the indentation of print statement isn't necessary. <laughs> However, it's a convention that Rubyists, Ruby enthusiasts, follow, so it's good to get in the habit now. A block of code following an if statement should be indented two spaces. I find that questionable. I don't know if it's actually supposed to be two spaces or if that's their weird tab key phobia where they think, the majority of the population doesn't have a normal tab key, which I find completely ridiculous. I know it's possible, just considering that... Anyways, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We're going to do tab, because I think the two-space thing is just awful. Um, unless, they, unless they give us flack, and they don't let us pass the activity for having more than two spaces, then we'll deal with two. But in the meantime, tab key. Uh, do, 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 do. When you're done with your if, you have to tell Ruby. You have to tell Ruby by typing end. Oh, when you're done, you have to tell Ruby by typing end. Okay, so that is, that is part of it. Hmm. I'm just reflecting on that. So by typing end, I, I realize Ruby is supposed to be more human-friendly than computer-friendly. But so far, even though it's only the, what, third day, second, third day, I've started to see more and more little things like end, where it's extra work on the human side to keep it more human-friendly. And I don't know if that's actually as helpful. I think just learning, dealing with the learning curve of it being more computer focused seems to be more beneficial in the long run to simplify the code. Maybe. Who knows? We're only on day two or three of Ruby, so we'll, we'll find out. Maybe that's all. That could just be my confusion. Instructions. Write your own if statement in the editor and take any expression you want even just true, but it should evaluate to true. When it does, it should print a string of your choice to the console using print or puts. If true, print. I don't know. Print something. Little itty is little uh-huh okay good 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 we should capitalize that all right little kitty is little these are all facts and uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. save and submit dot nil why i swear to god they better explain what the hell that dot nil is my god all right else if the partner to the if statement is the else statement and if else statement says to ruby oh what else i think i threw in an if somewhere i felt like maybe i just read it weird the partner to the if statement is the else statement there we go it was the flow my bad an if else statement says to Ruby, if this expression is true, run this code block. Otherwise, run the code after the else statement. Here's an example. If 
one is greater than two, print, I won't get printed because one is less than two, else, print, that means I'll get printed, end. Instructions, try it yourself in the editor, use any expression you like, your if else statement, make sure both branches, printing a string of your choice to the console. Wait. Use any expression you like in your if else statement, but make sure both branches print a string of your choice. Okay. They need to have print. We don't have to have both of them print. Plus, I don't know if you could by default. I don't think you can have an if else print both. You know what I mean? I don't think there's any way to have this print and this print. Unless both were true. But at that point, I don't know why you would have it set up as an if else if both are true. Right? Kind of weird. Um, else. <coughs> false. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's kind of weird. Else. Well, if that's true, blah. Else, which would imply this is false if that's true and vice versa if it were tr uh, false then else would mean if that's true print this line do, 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 do. if little kitty is gigantic. Dum dum dum. Wait a second. I did not. Nope. Yeah, I did. I did spell that right. It just looked incredibly weird to me. I don't use gigantic in my my daily vocab. Excellent. Okay. Elsif. What if you want more than two options? It's else if to the rescue. The else if statement can add any number of alternatives to an if else statement, like so. If x is less than y, assumes x and y are defined, puts x is less than y, else if x is greater than y, puts x is greater than y, else puts x equal to y, ends. Add an else if block here if else statement in the editor. Do, 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 do. This is extremely repetitive to all the other stuff we did. Do, 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 do. This kind of feels like hell. Else if. Do, 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 do. Huh. What do we... If true, blah, else that, if... Hmm. I think we're going to have to start adding other stuff. We're going to steal their X, Y example. Mainly because I just don't care anymore. Do 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 do. They don't change the order of it. They're just changing the greater than less than. Okay. Okay. Despite the pain. Plus, I feel totally. I I woke up like hours ago. Like just a few hours ago. That's yeah, because I was up all I was up all day, then stayed up all night in line, got the thing, and then slept all day. So my body, even though I slept, I'm still all crazy. Even though when I'm well rested, still still a rather strange person, nonetheless, but extra off kilter today. So what are we printing? We were doing all this stuff. Tiny cats. Little kitty will be a mystery.
There is no little kitty. See that? It's a Matrix reference. There is no spoon. We'll even do a question mark. Do 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 do. Look at that. Like a we we've got we've got our our period and our question mark and our exclamation. Like a punctuation salad bar, right? We we got it all. We got it all. Undefined. Who the hell? Oh, because we didn't define our variables. All right, all right, fine. So we're gonna say. What do we do? What do we do? We will have it prior to that. Let's extra work to make our life son of a x equals one and y equals two. Bring to see if that works. Eh, there is no ability. Fun. Because one isn't greater than two, one is less than two, and uh, yeah, screw that noise. Good, good, awesome, awesome, okay, that's fun. Next. Alright, unless, eh, something, something slightly new, perhaps? Sometimes you want to use the control flow to check if something is false. Rather than if it's true, you could reverse your if-else, but Ruby will do you one better. It will let you use an unless statement. Let's say you don't want to eat unless you're hungry. That is, while you're not hungry, you write programs, but if you are hungry, you eat. You, write, you might write this program in Ruby like this, unless hungry, write some sweet programs, else have some noms. End. Instructions, we start you off in the editor, replace blah 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 with correct unless statement code so your program prints out, I'm writing Ruby programs. Okay. Hungry is currently false. Blah blah. Unless hungry. Put I'm Unless you're hungry, and hungry is currently false, which means line 3 will be true, so it will run the code block on line 4. 5 is else time to eat. End. So basically exactly what they have in their example. Unless hungry... To do else followed by end. Do to do. I'm writing Ruby programs. Make comparisons equal or not. Or breathing or not, kind of like me. <laughs> Ugh, damn you, little cat. Everything else I might be allergic to. Uh, equal or not. In Ruby, we assign values to variables using the equal sign. The assignment operator. But, if we've already used equals for assignment, how do we check to see if two things are equal? Well, we use two equal signs, which is a comparator, also called rational, uh, relational operator. Two equals means is equal to when you type x equals 2 y equals 2 if x is equal to 2 print x and y are equal and cool so you're saying if x equals y print x uh, you're saying if x equals y print x and y are equal you can also check to see if two values are not equal using the exclamation equal comparator you could do instructions. We've got two variables in the editor. Is true and is false. 
replace the blah 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 with two equal signs or a not equal sign to make is true evaluate to true and is false evaluate to false. Nice. So, two is true. What? Two What 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 I think I'm confused. Like I, I wanna just do this this two is less than three. That's true. And I want to make this false, although that's not false. Like, that would be false. 2 isn't greater than 3. That would be false. And this is supposed to be false. So if I make it true, or say 2 is not equal to 3, that's accurate so i don't know i mean that count is true which means that isn't false and i don't know if they want us to only use the equal stuff or if we're supposed to use the less than or greater than what is what is happening who's driving this thing instructions we've got two variables in the editor is true and is false replace the blah 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 with equals or not equals to make is true, evaluate to true, and is false. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So it's exactly what I thought. We're just reversing it. Two does not equal three. That is a true statement. This is true. This, two, is equal to three is a big fat lie, which means it is false. Good. <sighs> totally overthinking that. Plus, I think I think they're right. I think we are getting hungry. So, you know, that's that's something to consider. Seven out of seventeen. We are barely making our way there. Less than or greater than. We can also check to see if one value is less than, less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to another. Those operators look like this: less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. <coughs> instructions i'm just thinking to myself there's no gold star or sticker at the end of this whole year of streaming or a uh, year of learning to code i mean there will be we'll see what happens free code camp sounds promising because it's helping real world organizations and people potentially find work or other things to do start to get more hands-on but a year of this i know it won't be remedial forever but right now and if i started off at ruby this would all be fascinating but after going through so many intros but again i just damn it's okay don't worry about it don't overanalyze what we're doing steven don't overanalyze just do it get it over with be happy that we've made it this far 114 days all right, don't lose focus. Less than or greater than. You can also check all that nonsense. Great, great, great. Less than, less than or equal to, blah, blah, and blah. Instructions. We've set a few more at, uh, variables in the editor. Want you to evaluate them to true. Your job, replace blah with blah. Golden. Okay, so we have... 17 is greater than 16. 21 is less than 30. I'm trying to figure out how to put these in and balance them out like micro sudoku i 
Is that less than or equal to correct? Uh oh, no, 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 no. Because we need to use all of them. So the last two will be that is less than four. That's less than or equal to. Could be greater than or equal to. That's another. That's another way of doing it. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. There's a couple different ways we can do this, and we're just going to change that. There we go. Greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Probably not the order they wanted. That's okay. Everything checks out to true, which is what they wanted. And we got the, the green. Practice makes perfect. All right. Great work so far. You know what they say, practice makes perfect. Let's try a few more comparators to make sure you've got the hang of this. Instructions for this round will show you the comparators and you set each variable to true or false depending on what value you expect the expression to return. What about what, 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 what? Remember no quotes. Oh, I'm stating true or false. I'm analyzing their work now. <laughs> Okay, so that does not equal that. That will be false, because that is the same. The less than e, that is true. And that is less than that. That's also true. And 100 is equal to, that is just false. Save and submit. Boom. Nice. And comparators aren't the only comparators available to you in Ruby. Ah, comparators aren't the only operators available to you in Ruby. You can also use logical or Boolean operators. Ruby is three and, or, and not. Boolean operators result in Boolean values, true or false. Boolean operator and dual ampersand signs only results in true when both expressions either on either side of and are true. Here's how and works. True and true is true. True and false is false. False and true. Also false. False and false. False. Lovely. For example, one is less than two and two is less than three is true because it is true that one is less than two and that two is less than three. Cool. God, this is painful. So, it's only because it's 114 days of the remedial stuff. Again, if this, if this were day one and we were starting on Ruby, this would be delightful. It would be. That's how we felt about all the other sections. It's just wearing on us now. Probably doesn't help that we were sitting in line for that ridiculous Nest Classic console, but so we're a little loopy, slightly on edge, but that's all right. We're, we're making progress. Nine. 17. We are getting there slowly. <clears throat> hey, uh, Gloomy Mist, how are you doing? Uh, Gloomy Mist, why are you learning Ruby? What a, what a perfectly timed question, Gloomy Mist. Uh, I am learning Ruby because where's a good place to jump to? How the hell do I get out of here? There we go. There we go. Load up the catalog. Do to do to do. Uh, well, we've we've learned lots of stuff. Uh, Ruby was just the next item on the trail here at Code Academy. So we've conquered. They recently they were updating stuff. They just added this. Looks like uh, earlier today they were doing some maintenance on um, Python, Ruby, and a couple other things. Their PHP course, but they just added this guy within the last 12 to 24 hours it seems like i've been here on code academy oh god we're moving around for the last 114 days uh but why ruby uh because it's next on the list why learning to code because we wanted to learn to code and uh the short story i've got a crappy computer a great capture card, my computer isn't good enough to run the capture card, and this is about all my computer can handle as far as streaming. Is streaming 
learn code. Basic, basic stuff. So that's that. I can stream directly through my Xbox One, but that's neither here nor there. I've got other things that I want to stream before those games. So yeah. So right now the goal is just to conquer Code Academy. I'm more than halfway through. I'm nearing about two-thirds of the way through Code Academy. Um, and then once I conquer Code Academy, I'll move on to uh, Free Code Camp and some other additional resources and start my own uh, side projects and other things like that. But I'm just trying to understand the foundation for, for all the different languages um, or a, a smattering of the different languages that are out there before I really commit to one. I'll probably end up focusing definitely a lot on JavaScript. Uh, I really like SAS. SAS was awesome. For, for CSS, that was an extremely versatile tool. That was probably one of my favorite classes here on, or courses here on Code Academy. So yeah. Gloomy Mist. Oh, so you're moving around learning basics in different languages. Okay, exactly. Exactly. You got it, Gloomy. Right. Right on the head of the nail. All right. Uh, so that's that, that. We're doing good. We are doing good. So anyways, uh, as far as learning the basics, yes, it's just this is... I've learned comparators now. I've done like 14 or 15 different classes over the last 114 days, so it's just kind of wearing thin going over going over the basics, but that's okay. We are we're just trying to complete everything here. And seeing the basics that much is good uh cuz it lets me know how critical understanding the fundamentals are. So that's looking for the silver lining in it instructions all right let's practice with a bit of the and check out the boolean expressions set each variable to true or false depending on the value you expect from the expression to return very similar to the last activity we just did so 77 is less than 78 and that is false so this will be false because both need to be true we got one false all things kaput. True, and that's also true. So we get true here, as well as two. So that, what is that? Eight, two, four, eight uh, equals eight. Yes, that is that is good. And then we've got three. That is nine equals nine. Both of those are true. This is true. Do, 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 do. Save and submit. Boom. Green check mark for us. Beautiful. Ten of seventeen. We are we are inching closer to the end. Or Ruby also has the or operator. Ruby's or is called an inclusive or because it evaluates to true when one or the other or when one or the other or both expressions are true. Ah, one or the other, or both expressions are true. There we go. Crazy person. Just struggling. Reading is difficult, all right? We were up all night waiting in that awful line outside of Best Buy to get that damn NES Classic console. Okay, good, good, good. Check it out. True or true is true. True or false, also false or true. True, still False or false, gigantic false. Instructions, set each variable to true or false, depending on what you expect. Same song and dance. Continuing on, that's 8, not equal to 9. That is true, and that is true, so true. If we get one true, we didn't even need to do the math. If we have one true, then we know we're good. False or false. We'll just jump to that one, and... That is, that is a lie. So false. Cool. D -d 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 -d. Beautiful. Not. Finally, Ruby has the Boolean operator not. The exclamation. Usually exclamation equals or whatever. Okay. Uh, has the Boolean operator not. Makes true values false and vice versa. Not true. 
False, not false, true. Clever how that works. Instructions set each variable to true or false depending on what value you expect. The expression to return not true would be false, just like they stated in the example. Not true and not true both are false. And lastly, seven. 700 divided by 10 equals 70, but it's not 70. I don't, what the, oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Have to have to, this is the dividing line. This is the balance. We're balancing 70 divided by 10. Does that equal 70 or 700 divided? Yes, yes. So that, this is true, but. We've got our exclamation false. Do 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 Combining Boolean operators. You can combine Boolean operators in your expressions. Combinations like X and Y or W and Z are not only legal expressions, but are extremely useful tools for your programs. These expressions may take some getting used to, but you can always use parentheses to control the order of evaluation. Expressions in parentheses are always evaluated before anything outside parentheses. Instructions. Last one. Set each variable to true or false, depending on what you expect the expression to return. All right. We have got... Oh, God. What do we have? What do we have? We have uh, 3 less than 4, which is true or false, so that's true, and false or true, which is also true, so that's true across the board. We've got not true, which is false, and, well, that tells us right there it's going to be false because of the and. And the and is outside of this. So this is all. That's just that noise. We don't need any of that. Hold on. Hold on. Tiny cat knocked over a bottle of something. Little cat, I almost want to use you to mop up what you spilled. Just to punish you, but I won't. Don't mind me. Crisis. Crisis mode.
Okay. Crisis averted. The drink has been has been cleaned up. The little kitty went on a rampage. She knocked over like a half bottle of one of those uh the Izzy's those things. Like fruity drinks. The missus enjoys them. Just subject to to looking at them. Anyways, drink crisis slash spill 2017 dealt with. We are no longer floating. Esau good. Hey, Topher, how you doing? Uh, miss the drink spill? Damn, yeah, it was uh, not that grand, all things considered. It was a, uh, you know, regular glass bottle and it was only like... <laughs> Less than a third. Just a lot of rolling on the floor half it fell after it fell off the desk. So we're good. We're good. Paper towels and Windex. Solved that. Speaking of solving things, we are on 12. Where'd we leave off? 12 of 17. We finished the first one. We were looking at oh yes, we were looking at the fact at the and operator is outside of the parentheses, so it doesn't even matter what the hell's happening in here. The fact that this is false with an and means it's gonna be false. But yes, good, good, good. Okay. There we go. There we go. <sighs> There's so much crap floating around. Kitty fuzz and when Dex missed, who even knows? Uh, three, Boolean three, true, or same song and dance, doesn't even matter what's happening here. The fact that we've got an or operator outside of the parentheses, and or is dealing with anything true, means it will be true. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Something happened and it was three. I was wrong. I was wrong. Does it always equate to false when it's an or? I misread something. True or not true? It looks like your value for now it's there's only two ways this could go, right? It's either true or false. Looks like your value for Boolean 3 is incorrect. Am I tripping out? Topher. Oh, you miss. I misspelled true. Gotcha. Gotcha. That. That happens. Ah, uh, thank God for, for you stopping by, because I would have been so, so confused. I would have been stuck there for a long time. <laughs> okay, that works. Way cool. All right. Nice work. Great, great work so far. You've, uh, so far you've learned... How to use if else and else if how to use comparators relational operators like equals not equals less than less than equals to greater than greater than equals to how to use boolean logical operators like and or and not instructions take a second to reflect on what you've learned so far when you're ready hit save and submit code to start the review exercises and we're off <laughs> okay if, else, and else, if. You're right. No, no, no. I read this bit, and then that. Not, not how that works. All right. You're all on your lonesome. Well, not quite. We'll just leave this example here. Blah, diddly, blah, diddly, blah. Instructions. Create an if, else statement in the editor. Make sure to include at least one else if branch of the statement and print something to the console. They just want us to do everything and include an else if. That's not really specific. Hey, hey, hey. 
Hekka? No. H. Kekka. Maybe the A makes the E say its name. Kika? Kika. Hunter Kekka. We're going to go with Hunter. We're going to go with Hunter. How are you doing, Hunter? Hunter is infinitely easier for my soul mind to comprehend. <laughs> uh, I hope you're doing well. All right. Instructions. Create an if-else statement in the editor. Make sure to include at least one else-if branch of the statement. Should print something to the console. Here we go. Let's do this. We are going to have if something print else if print followed by else tiny cat you've already spilled a drink so far this stream you are you are on thin ice all right better check yourself There, look. Scratches. Scratches. Good. Good. Hey, no, your foot is on chat. Go away. Go away. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Playing, playing with the mic. Hey, hey, no, no, I'm so close. I'm just trying to get through the review. Look, assume the napping position. No, 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 no. You're using... Hey, stop sitting on the keyboard. Stop sitting on the keyboard. Bad, 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 bad. Oh, my God. Up, 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 up. Son of a... Oh my god, she's totally... Oh my god, she's on everything. Don't mind me. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, she activated Siri on my computer. And she captured... Oh my god, she's on everything. That's, that's ridiculous. Okay, hold on. Let me just make sure... Wow. Good for you, cat. You managed to type a lot in that. That's that's just bad. Nice. Okay. Holy hell. We're gonna reset the code. Beautiful. Sweet baby Jesus. Ugh. Okay. There's that. Here's this. I don't think she moved the webcam too much, and the mic is mostly good. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, do 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 do. Close that. We're back afloat. Everything is back to normal. You just need an if else statement, and to not. Not burn down the internet. Uh, so from the title, you're learning programming. What is your goal? Currently, my immediate goal is to complete all the courses at Code Academy. Just to get a feel, kind of do a, a sampler of all the different languages they have to offer. I know they don't cover all the languages, like they're missing a lot of the, the C languages, C Sharp and C++ and other things like that. They don't have a Node.js course. Um, there's a couple key courses like that that they don't offer, but they do cover quite a bit. And I've made my way just, I'm, I'm nearing about two thirds completion of what they have. So once I've completed this, then I'll probably focus in more on one or a few specific languages definitely like javascript um and sass sass is good just what you can do with css using sass is is pretty awesome so yeah that's that but we're i'm i'm made it all the way to ruby and uh i've i've mainly got once i complete ruby there's just a couple more courses left so yeah yeah, there is, uh, Topher, you were right, that is a new, a new course. They added that within the last, like, 12 to 24 hours. I mean, it wasn't there last night, and I did that, you know, I finished the stream at, like, 1 a.m., so. 
Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of it in the meantime. So uh, I forget who was it. It was uh, Gloomy Mist was in here earlier, kind of asking the same same question. Um, but I'm in dealing with Twitch, trying to stream daily. I've got an older computer. I've got a great capture card, but my computer's too old to handle it. So streaming something basic like learning to code is about this right here is about as much uh, complexity as my computer can handle streaming. So this gives me something that I can do every single day uh, as well. Because I wanted to, to practice streaming every single day. Still wanted it to be productive. So this was kind of a good balance as far as things that I could do in the meantime. So that's that's that. Do 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 do. All right, we are so close. Good, good, good. Uh, you've learned control flow already. That'll be easy to knock out. Yeah, uh, it looked, all the concepts and the things they had mentioned, even their tiny summary just on that course catalog page, it already looks like I had covered everything. So I think they just broke it out into another little module course. Um, but yeah, good. All right, we were, we were so close. If, if, print else if print else print and end do 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 do, do. if do 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 x less than y if x is greater than y If x is less than y, else do 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 print ha 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 versus wa ha 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 ha. Very ominous. No laughing. We need quotes for all that stuff I just realized. Little kitty, I can hear you digging through that bag. You can get bopped on the head real quick. We need to tell it what x is. x equals, I know this is the least interesting if statement known to mankind ever, but... Their Ruby course really hasn't been all that inspiring, you know, you know, so boom, wahahaha, ha, ha, ha. and how appropriate, nil, the ghost in the machine is still there, god damn it. Next lesson, all right, 15 of 17, we are, we are getting there. <laughs> okay, unless... Good. Now let's review the unless statement. Problem equals false. Print. Good to go. Unless. Problem. Remember this is basically shorthand if, a shorthand if statement. It will only do whatever you ask unless the condition is true. In our example, problem is false. So we don't have a problem. We print. Good to go. Instruction. Create an uh, create an unless statement in the editor. The statement should print something to the console. We'll gander at their hint. Remember, unless syntax looks like this, unless condition, blah, end, or unless do something. Yes, good, code, great, beautiful. All right. Uh, do, 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 success is nice. Learn control. Uh, I've been learning programming for about three years. This is, this is Hunter. Hunter, I've been learning programming for about three years, mostly web dev stuff, PHP, JavaScript, Java, some others. I hope you'll stick with programming. I find it amazing to be able to control computers. Never use Ruby, though. Haha, <laughs> not the ghost. Yes, good, good, good. Awesome. Well, that's, that's good times. Three years is a good chunk of time. Uh, I, I definitely say that because the last 114 days has felt like hell, but that's because I'm living this beautiful nightmare daily so it's it's good though it's definitely like learning a language 
So practicing it every single day, I think, has helped an immense amount in just kind of getting used to that consistency of trying to trying to get used to doing it daily. So, but yes, and then as far as Topher, yeah, just like we we discussed it. What was it the other night? That that game. I don't know if the official villain's name will be Nil, but the first side project game, the the villain's name will be will be Nil during the the development stage. That'll be its project name. Okay. We've got unless we've got problem unless something the days are all blurring together. Yeah, no, really, definitely. There was day one, and then it was just all downhill after day one. We're still falling. It's like falling down a, a never-ending pit for 114 days. We've got the rest of the year to, to just kind of see what happens. All right, we are doing unless something. Unless. Condition. Do we do unless? That doesn't seem right. That can't be right at all. Problem false. Hold on. Their example's throwing me off because I'm a crazy person. So we're going to jump back to five. Unless hungry. Okay, so hungry is false, problem was false, so we, we have our factor as long as it's false, and then we reference our code, and it prints that. Good to go. That's all. We just need a little reminder just to push in the right direction. 15. 15. Do, 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 do. Hunter, I wish I found the stream earlier. That's, that's kind. Uh, yeah, all the... All 113 previous streams of frustration are all here on Twitch and on YouTube. It's pretty much unavoidable. Uh, the Some of the Twitch streams, like, if you see a multi-clip, like, I don't know, we'll say Day 109 shows two streams, like a 1 minute and 20 second clip, and then like a 50 minute clip, the stream cut out. So some of the streams on twitch the archives aren't a hundred percent i have the full episodes recorded locally as i'm streaming them which all the full episodes or full streams are on youtube so that's that if you ever run into patchy streams in the archives here on twitch the the full streams are are on youtube so that's that's the official backup um, do to do, do, unless we, we're doing something false. We're going to do, uh, what do we do? What do we do? We're going to do, we are, we're going to do variable equals false. Because I can't think of anything right now, and that makes my mind feel at ease not having to think about that so variable is false print i am not a variable unless variable beautiful beautiful i mean that's very to the point. I'm not a variable. These are these are facts. These are facts, right? Okay. 16 of 17. We are so we can almost taste the end. Dare to compare. They're rhyming. They're getting bold. Now let's review comparators. <sighs> Relational operators. Let's review comparators slash relational operators. We've turned the tables a bit. Remember, comparators need to compare two values to each other to result in true or false. 10, greater than 8, 8, blah, blah, good. Numbers and things. Beautiful. Everyone's interested. Instructions. We're letting you know what the value... No, no, no. 
We're letting you know what value, true or false, we want each variable to have. Your job is to add expressions that evaluate to the correct value using comparators. Cool. Challenge accepted. Test one should be false. Oh, and we're adding this. Gotcha. We're doing all the all the work ourselves. I almost typed in just directly false. That's that would have been bad. I'm sure we could get away with that. But we'll we'll put in a hint more effort. Okay, so they want it to be false. 399 is less than 2. Should be false. Uh, 6 does not equal 6. And should be true. 42 is less than 73. <laughs> True. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do, 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 do. Billions of Booleans. Home stretch. Let's go over Boolean operators. One equals one and two equals two. Comes out to true. One equals two. That's a lie. That's false. Or two equals two. That's true. So this whole set equals true. And we've got false, but it's not because of the exclamation. So this whole thing is true. Beautiful. One with and both comparisons on the left and right must evaluate to true for the entire statement to return true. If the left side does not return true. It will not bother trying the right side. Two with or either the right or left side must evaluate to true. If the left side evaluates to true, the right side will not be tried because it has met the conditions of one side being true. And three not does the opposite. If you're false, you're now true. If you're true, you're now false. Just think of it as opposite day instructions the code in the editor indicates what value true or false we want each variable to have your job is to add an expression that evaluates to the correct value using boolean operators and or or not test one okay same song and dance they want us to do all the hard clever work good 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 it should be true um we're gonna do first off before we do anything crazy we're just gonna do and or and not which this will be sorry to steal their thunder but true oh god a lot of a lot of spacing going on i'm just formatting it the way they had it because i don't know i'm just following their example i don't know what i'm doing uh two it's only it's only day 114 and day three of Ruby, so should should be should be true. All we need is one side to be true. So two equals two, and then this could be L. This could be whatever we want. Over nine thousand is greater than. 8,099. Also, also a fact. That is true. Um, and lastly, both could be false, but that's irrelevant. Or not both. One of those could be false, but eh. Screw it, right? You know what? We'll do that. We'll do that. Less than. Just to fuck with them. We've got our parentheses. Okay, and lastly... Blank and blank should be true. Uh, one is less than two. And two is less than three. All right. I think, I think that is relatively okay. Save and submit. Congratulations. You finished this course. Can uh, Control flow in Ruby. Close that next bit. Let's take a peek at what we have up next. This meaneth war. 
Using control flow, we can modify user's input and return it to them. In this project, we'll make them sound like Daffy Duck. Next lesson. All right. We're going to gauge if it's small, even though it's one of their projects. So even though it may be short, their projects take a little bit longer, despite having less sections. Little cat, I love you. But don't ruin the stream. All right. Uh, what will we be building? How many sections? How many sections? Eight. Ew. Little cat, do we want to do eight? If you assume the napping position, I will consider eight. She walked right past the napping position. She's already on the floor. We're going to look at this. We're going to see. We might save this for tomorrow. What you'll be building. Now that we can direct our program using if-else statements, we can produce different results based on different user input. In this project, we'll combine control flow with a few new Ruby string methods to Daffy Duck to Daffy Duckify a user's string, replacing son of a bitch little cat. You keep blocking the string, replacing the user's string, uh, replacing each S with TH. Okay. Okay, I think we're going to be fine, because usually they show tiny animal. I'm going to bop you so hard. I love you. We are on the verge of success. We're going to do reset code. I don't even know what she touched. She probably didn't touch anything. Point is, is on page one, they usually indicate the whole project. This doesn't look that big. So, Topher, easy project. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Let's let's go ahead and knock this out. We'll we'll celebrate. Today's 114. Go time. Little kitty, are you are you getting in on this? You can nap. You can assume the napping position beneath the desk if you want to be a part of this. Otherwise, go go find somewhere else to hang out until until we can no, no, no. You're sitting on the desk. Get your ass off my phone. You're not even paying attention to me. God damn it. Uh, okay, what you'll be building. I'm just going to pretend she's not going to be there. Click save and submit. Slippery slope. Ring. Please. Wow, this is going to be ridiculous. I don't know if anything... Hey, hey, little cat. Oh my god, oh my god. Furry devil little kitty is a nightmare. All we have is one S in there. Good. We threw in some extra S's just because we can. Enter. Your string is little kitty if a nightmare. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what we wanted. Next lesson. Okay, little cat, I know you're on the desk. Um, how do we want to do this? We want to... We're going to leave little cat. I am going to move the keyboard because you're awful little cat it's called sharing yeah you can have the desk this is little kitty yeah he's on the desk little kitty wants to program too that is very true Topher these that is a wonderful observation she also wants to uh, burn the house down and, and claw me, and many other fun activities that we just don't have time for since we're streaming. Your tail's on the trackpad, cat. Okay, getting user input. First, we should print a statement to prompt a user, you're awful, your toes, everything about you is covered in fur. I want you to reflect on that. You are, you're the animal version of Robin Williams. Just head to toe, fur. That is you. Ugh, okay. De-stress. Don't, don't think about the cat, Steven. She's full of love, and she's now sleeping. Exactly where we need to be, but nevertheless, she's 
is doing her thing. All right, getting user input. First, we should print a statement to prompt the user for input, and then set that input to a variable using get.chomp. Print after the user input, declare a variable, call the user input, set it equal to the user input, gets chomp. So user input, copy, boom, equals, Gets dot chomp dot chomp and print user input. Was that underscore user input? Yes, it was input. Okay, okay, we're good. We're good. Next. <laughs> there we go. So graceful. Enter. Fantastic. Next lesson. Three of eight. Hunter, okay, gotta get some sleep. See you all next stream. Awesome. Hunter, thank you for stopping by. Greatly appreciate it. Good good luck on the sleep front. And uh there's a whole rest of the year remaining, so feel free to stop by any time. All right, down case. Down case. We, we want something. We want to make sure we capture both S and S, capital and lowercase, in the user's input. We could write separate if-else statements to handle this, but we can also use dot down case to convert the user's input to all lowercase. That way, we only have to search for lowercase s. Call the dot down case method on user input. Make sure to include not exclamation so that the user's string is modified in place. Not sure what we're getting at here with the not thing. Oh, dot down case exclamation. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I yeah. Crazy person. Good. Didn't notice that. Make sure to use that. String modified in place. Otherwise, Ruby will create a copy of user input and modify that instead. Awesome. Uh, is this your first programming you're learning, or did you do another language or something before Ruby? Uh, I've done like 14 or so uh, courses here at Code Academy. We don't need to really go in depth, but this one right here is a good example. Um, this is the first time I've done anything with Ruby though. So I've gone through HTML and CSS, JavaScript. Those were intro courses, SAS, making a website, Python. Uh, they had a more in-depth JavaScript course and HTML and CSS as well. I uh, just finished with React and Angular. Um, a lot of these, despite how in-depth they go, are still fairly high level overview kind of fundamental courses uh and now we're we just embarked on ruby uh within the last like two or three days so that's that's that all right we are doing something with user input and dot down case user input gets chomp uh dot down case that's what we wanted here dot down case exclamation can't see where i'm typing under my desk save and submit we're gonna do caps shift oh beautiful and yes yes delightful delightful enter ta-da all lowercase like magic little cat it is it's like magic all right next Next lesson. Your your tail is soft. Your tail is soft. Uh do 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 do. We are scratching the little kitty. We are scratching the little kitty. Okay, focus, Steven. Focus. Plenty of time to scratch the cat later. Setting up the if branch part oon. Alright, time to add in a little control flow. For the if half of a branch, we want to check whether the user's input contains an S. If string to check dot include question substring. 
We can do that using rubies dot include question mark tagging along at the end method, which evaluates to true if it finds what it's looking for and false otherwise. As a general rule, Ruby methods that end with question mark evaluate to the Boolean value true or false. Cat, your toes are on the trackpad. <clears throat> All right. Uh, X E C. Yeah. Ah, that's pretty cool. Doing all the different languages, you'll learn the use of methods, etc., in different frameworks. Like in Ruby, it's dot down case. In C sharp, it's dot to lower JavaScript. Dot to lower case. So it's a good idea for you to get some of all the languages. That's that's what I was thinking. Although I do have to venture elsewhere. Once I complete Code Academy, which I'm like two thirds of the way through the site, or nearing two thirds of the way through all their courses that they have to offer, I'll need to venture elsewhere for uh, some of the C languages and um, some other things like uh, Node Node JS. But that's that's all to come in the near future, hopefully. So. That's that. We are we're doing we're doing stuff. We're we're setting up the if instructions. We want to check the user's input for the substring s. One. Write an if statement in the editor. It should check to see if user input includes s. For now, print a string of your choice to the console where it finds s. Feel free to peek back the first exercise if you need help. Do 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 do. User input. No, no, it's if user input. If user underscore input. Do 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 do. You know what, little cat? You've just you fully. It's so much easier typing on the desk, but you're napping there. Oh. You know, I want I want you to be comfy, but um, hey, hey, no, no, stop pushing my cell phone off the table like tug of war right now. Uh, good idea. Learn some of all the languages. By the end of this year, you'll be able to lowercase all the strings in any languages. Uh, if you're trying to get a future job, it is recommended that you focus on one framework, though. Yeah, uh, Code Academy is just kind of the the base tester sample plate uh and then from there I'll, I'll focus on probably just one or a few languages try and do something more practical okay little cat you're moving you're moving the webcam and you're pushing the keyboard so we're gonna move you bear with me tiny demon tiny demon we're gonna set this here and we're gonna set the phone there you thought we were gonna lift you no, we're just going to slide you off the table since you're putting up such a damn fight. Get your claws out of my lung. Ah, uh, uh, claws. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> we're alive. We aren't bleeding. So, you know, we're going to take whatever wins we can get. It's a small victory. Didn't feel like a win, but it was. Let's set that. <clears throat> a lot of fur, though. A lot of fur. Holy hell. Okay, we got the phone. This is painful. Do 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 Okay, we've got if, we've got user input, and now little kitty's gone. Son of a bitch. He's just awful. Okay, if user input uh dot something dot include Question mark. I'm assuming we have to tell include what we're looking for. Or kind of similar to unless, right? Uh, include my guess is S, but it it's probably gonna blow up and give us an error. That's totally fine. I'm gonna jump back to section one. Okay. 
Uh, test your knowledge or recommend doing programming quizzes, which challenges you to use everything you've learned about the basic stuff and combine it. Simple one is FizzBuzz. Ah, yes, I did. I did the, they had a FizzBuzz in, I believe it was the JavaScript course. You don't need to go digging through it, but... Well, you know what, that's totally, you know what, it was either jQuery or JavaScript. It actually may have been jQuery. <laughs> Bonsai effects. Oh, you know what, and it's too high level here. You know what? Probably JavaScript. And... I think it was one of the projects, like the address book. Maybe it's right in the beginning. Code your own adventure. Rock, paper, scissors. Search text for loop. Dragon Slayer. I almost want to say it was the search for your name. I think they started with FizzBuzz, but anyways, we I they had the FizzBuzz activity here on uh, Code Academy, so that was that was tons of fun. Uh, ToferCodeWars.com is good for good for that. Yeah, that's another one. Free Code Camp uh, will be the next destination after Code Academy, but Code Wars is another place that we will be exploring as well. All right, so we have we have all of this. If blah 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 dot include. Oh, we just put the s right at the end. We don't even have to set up a variable for it, or uh, well, yeah, set up a variable to include it, like we did for unless. User input dot. We're gonna get there. They're gonna cover this. All we have to do is that right now. So let's jump back. <laughs> and it's loading and it's loading beautiful we can just get rid of this boom not needed quotes s good to know uh looks like your if statement oh we forgot to print we forgot to print and put an end print something and user input oh i guess i should be pulling this my bad my bad even submit <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Ta da! Beautiful. All right, there we go. Caviar Liberta. Never seen Ruby coded. Ah, well, this is definitely not the place to check that out because I've never seen Ruby coded either. <laughs> uh, well, technically, this is what the second or third day, so yeah, it's um, it's not the most inspiring code. Like the language, I don't know. Like learning CSS was fun. You can. Even, you know, JavaScript and just basically all the courses I've done so far, like, I want to learn more. Maybe it's just how the instructions are laid out on this, but it's the same kind of feel and flow to the instructions as all the other courses I've completed. And it's just, I don't have the desire to, like, get to the next step with Ruby. I don't know what it is. I understand the idea and the concept that it's supposed to be human friendly, but just from the minor stuff, like having to put end at it, I think I'd mentioned this earlier in the stream today. They did all these little things, or he did all these little things to try and make it more human friendly, and it just seems like it's extra. 
the time and effort to learn the extra bits of Ruby that make it more human friendly, I'd rather see that time and effort in understanding non-human friendly languages like JavaScript or whatever, basically any other language, and just have it be more simplified. Just the if statement, not having to put end at the end of it, right? Uh, end tells it where's the scripts end. Yes, you have to specify end for where. Uh, with with if else statements, that is. So, um, yeah, you don't have to put end for everything. Um, but on, on that same note, they don't use semicolons in Ruby to end something. So it's a it's a semicolonless universe in Ruby, which is kind of. We'll call it questionable. Here's all high-level languages you're learning. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Setting, uh, what are we doing? Five. Which is why I want to get to the more, I, I want to find, I wish Code Academy had some of the C languages. C Sharp, C++, something painful. Don't mind me. I need to blow my nose. I'm just... I'm awful. <coughs> oh, God. I'm disgusting. Why? Okay, at least you don't have to keep track of of these, the curly braces, and... That's, that's true. Alright, what are we... what are we looking at? We are looking at... something. Oh, from the top. Setting up the if branch part two. Good. Now let's complete our if statement. When we find s, we want Ruby to replace every instance of s it finds with th. We can do this with the dot g sub exclamation method, which stands for global substitution. The syntax looks like this. String to change dot g sub. We focus on s, so it'll hunt down s and then it will replace it with th. When we get to later lessons, we'll explain why the slash s blah has to be written between slashes instead of between quotes. Note, you cannot put a space between g sub and the bit in parentheses. You cannot put a space between g sub and the bit in, okay, g sub exclamation is up against the parentheses right here there's there's no additional room for love it is just it's exclamation on parenthesis contact you know normally you have to pay double to see stuff like that but that's it's just out there in the open here in ruby remember you want the exclamation at the end of the method name so that ruby will change the string in place good Uh, do 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 Take a look at Golang. If you're experienced, it feels good not using semicolons and brackets. If you're working in a team with people who have less experience or new educated, it is almost mandatory for them to be able to read your code. So I don't have to be using semicolons down the line. I won't break that habit now. Still making my way through Code Academy, but interesting. So the semicolon is just a, more of a nice gesture to yourself and others, mainly new programmers. Interesting. I thought it was like an actual mechanic of the language that somehow told it to like halt. No one goes past the almighty semicolon. You got what I mean, right? Anyways, good, good. Good to know. Instructions. Remove the print statement you added to your if statement and replace it with a call to dot gsub on user input. Have it replace s with th. Replace the stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this. We're gonna put that there. And 
remove the print statement you added and replace it with a call to gsub on user input. So let's get rid of print. We have user input and we will have dot gsub instead. Exclamation with parentheses, no spaces between. And now we can do the slash attack, slash e slash. Oh god, holding shift. My bad. Just kidding. That was a lie. Don't mind the question marks. Slash slash s comma quotes ph and save and submit. How does that feel? Do they like that? Oh, I need to. Beautiful, beautiful. And enter. So graceful. Good, good, good. Next lesson. All right, we are on six of eight. We are nearing the end. Because S equals substitute should get used to using semicolons when you get around to a C-based language. Okay, so yeah, no, I I like the semicolon. I, I've gotten used to it. It's fun. Use semicolons. When you leave it out, the interpreter puts it in anyways, but it will sometimes insert an implicit semicolon where one would not want uh where one would not be wanted. Gotcha. That's why X T S I A. Yeah, I still. I'm just. You're gonna be. You're gonna be. Mm, you. You're gonna be Mr. X, Mrs. X, Commander X. Good, good. That's easier for me to remember. Uh, that is why Commander X says experienced developers can't remove them, but they still probably shouldn't. Or uh, experienced developers can remove them, but they still probably shouldn't. Good, good, good. All is well. Uh, we are so close. Six of eight. Setting up the else branch. The hardest part is over. Now we just need to let the user know if we don't find an instance of the letter S. Add an else statement that displays a string to the user to let them know if there's no S in their string. <laughs> D, 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 else, print, user input, that's what I'm thinking, print, I guess we don't need the double print, kind of overkill, let's see, does that work? <laughs> And beautiful, beautiful. All right, that works. That fly that flies. Returning the final string er string. We'll do a real string sentence test at the end. We'll get there. I'm not. We're just hammering on the keyboard in the meantime to make it through this nightmare. Home stretch. Now we want to display the Daffy Duckified string to the user. You can do that using the string interpolation we learned earlier. My string equals much muchachos print audios my string audios muchachos. Cool. Good, good, good. Instructions at a puts statement that uses string interpolation to show their show the user their transform string. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Do to do to do to do. Seven of eight. Ring. Totally blanking. Got a puts statement that uses string. So my string equals blah. My. So we want user input equals something
Why do I feel confused? Hold on. Don't mind me. Where the hell do they want me to put what now? <laughs> oh, that's literally all they wanted. I thought they were trying to trick me into doing something else up here. Oh, and they used a puts instead of a print. Fascinating. Anyways, regardless, aside from that, puts your string user input. Print. All right, so that works. That works. Do 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 do. Puts. Daffy says. Your string. Hashtag. Early stuff. User dot input. Not dot input. Underscore. That was close. That was close. Save and submit. This means war. Enter. This means war, Daffy says. This means war. I feel like we are missing something. Congratulations. Congratulations. Great work. How might you improve this project? You could add an additional if statement to reprompt the user for input if they don't enter anything. Think about how you might account for words in which letter C sounds like an S. Think about how you might perceive the user's original capitalization. Instructions, enough pondering now. When you're ready, click Save and Submit Code to complete this project. Why, since there's probably someone out there in the ether listening, why the deuce? Now I'm actually going to jump back to seven. Where, you know what, I'm going to jump to one. No, 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 we'll do seven first. Then we're going to go back to one. Here's mine. When I hit save and submit code, uh, S, S makes the TH sound. Cool. Select all. Copy. Uh, no, select. Copy, good, copy, we're golden, and enter. This bit, S makes the TH sound, then it says Daffy says, TH blah blah blah. Is it because I've got the user stuff up here as well? Because it's printing this? Do I know what? I don't need the code online too. I think that's my issue. Because when I go to section one, and they have their built out project. When we hit enter, they even make code. See, they've got all this. Oh, it prints this to prompt us. Then we throw that in. And then, oh, we don't need to print user down case. That's what, that's what I have wrong. It's the fact that I have print user input dot down case on line two. And they're printing the request versus what I'm saying. Problem solved. Problem solved. See that? String, please. Or in Daffy's voice, thring, please. S makes the TH sound. Enter. Your string is, which would be Daffy says, TH makes, uh, th makes the th sound. Perfect. Perfect. So let's go to seven and fix our, our code. 
at a minimum they were asking what we can do to improve it we can at least fix that so do to do to do i don't know if we necessarily need a prompt we we could print you know mm, print quack attack All right, there's that, and now save and submit. So uh, save and submit. Whack attack, boom. S makes the th sound. Go ahead and hit enter. Daffy says th makes the th sound. Perfect, perfect. We did it. Duck crisis averted. Congratulations. Fantastic. Enough pondering for now. When you're ready. Click save and submit code to complete this project, which we are done. Save and submit. We'll throw it in once more. Cool. Enter. Green check marks across the board. Hot damn. This means war. Way, way cool. Go ahead and close. Next. Up next, loops and iterators. Using loops and iterators, Ruby and automate repetitive tasks for you quickly and easily. All right, we will we will take a peek at this. Gander, what is on the horizon for day 115 tomorrow? What are we up against? The while loop, and that has 18 sections for tomorrow. Big day. And possibly, pending time, we may do the activity project for that after, but we'll see. Uh, the while loop. Sometimes you want to repeat an action in Ruby while a certain condition is true, but you don't know how many times you have to repeat that action. A good example would be prompting a user for a certain type of input. If they insist on giving you the wrong thing, you may have to re-ask them several times before you get the kind of input you're looking for. To accomplish this, we use something called a while loop. It checks to see if certain conditions, uh, if a certain condition is true, and while it is, the loop keeps running. As soon as the condition stops being true, the loop stops. So that is what we have on the books for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and back out, check out the stats at where we conclude day 114. We currently stand at 21% of the way through Ruby with 1,307 points of arbitrary confusion, frustration to our name, and 184 badges. Good, good, good. Awesome. Nice job. This is not the input you're looking for. Yes, exactly. Move along. <laughs> All right, uh, so that's that's basically it for today. We're, we're going to go ahead and, and power down. Thank you all to everyone who stopped by. Topher, Caviar, and uh, XT Set, Syed, and Hunter, and Gloomy, and anyone else who may have, who may have stopped by. Greatly appreciate it. Always, always good to have anyone come in, even if it's accidentally. Uh, so yeah, good, good times. Let's go ahead and power this down. Tomorrow, day 115, coming. It's going to happen. But day 114 dies now. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.